Okay, so in this video we want to uh, verify the trig identity cosecant x times cosine x, uh, all divided by the quantity tangent of x plus cotangent of x is equal to cosine squared x. And step number one in verifying trig identities is always to start with the more complicated side as your given information. So I'm just going to jot down to give myself some room. I'm going to jot down cosine squared x on the corner here. That's where I'm headed. And then I'll just put that this first step is my given. Okay, then I'm going to uh, recreate my trig identities hexagon over here in the side so that I uh, can remember what I've got as far as fundamental trig identities goes to pull from. So tangent is the sine divided by the cosine and then the reciprocals go in the diagonals. So reciprocal of cosine is secant, reciprocal of sine is cosecant, reciprocal of tangent is cotangent, and the center always gets a one. Okay, so there's my trig identities hexagon. And if I look at um, my numerator here, cosecant times uh, cosine, here's cosecant on the hexagon, here's cosine on the hexagon, and if you recall, um, the center of those two where they come together is the product identity. So the cotangent of x can replace the cosecant times the cosine because of that product identity. And that would be still divided by the tangent of x plus the cotangent of x. And that would be applying a product identity. And that's step number two. So now um, step number three, since I look at where I'm headed, I'm wanting to end up with a cosine squared, um, and I don't have any sines or cosines right now, I think I'm going to apply the strategy to switch everything to sines and cosines and hope that eventually my sines will cancel themselves out. So I'm going to use quotient identities in order to find um, a way to get everything represented as sines and cosines. So on the trig identity hexagon, um, the clockwise and counterclockwise consecutive vertices represent the quotient identities. So cotangent can be rewritten as a quotient of cosine divided by sine, and I'm going to go ahead and substitute that then for my cotangent in the numerator. So that is cosine of x divided by the sine of x. And uh, just so I don't end up with stacked fractions, I'm going to change this division uh, bar into a division symbol and then group my denominator in parentheses. And tangent of x, when I look back at my hexagon, tangent is the quotient of sine divided by cosine. So this will uh, replace the tangent from the denominator as sine of x divided by cosine of x. And then that is um, plus cotangent, which we already found is the quotient cosine of x divided by sine of x. So I just applied in step three the quotient identities for cotangent and tangent. Okay, I think I spelled that wrong. I D E N T I T identity. So in uh, parentheses here, I can see um, I've got two fractions that I need to add, and to do that I need a least common denominator. So I'm going to multiply this first fraction um, that has a denominator of cosine by the sine of x over, oops, divided by the sine of x, because sine of x over sine of x is 1, that won't change the value. The second fraction, cosine of x divided by sine of x, I'm going to multiply that fraction by cosine x divided by cosine x. Um, that way I've got in the denominators now a common denominator of sine times cosine, and I can simplify that in the next line and see what I've got. So cosine of x divided by sine of x, and then that's divided by this quantity. Sine of x times sine of x is sine squared x. Then cosine of x times cosine of x, that's cosine squared x. And that'll all be over my new common denominator, sine x times cosine x. Okay, 
and that step four, uh, we found an LCD, least common denominator, and we added the fractions. Okay, so now we're at step number five. And uh, right away here in the numerator, I've noticed that I now have a Pythagorean identity, sine squared x plus cosine squared x. Remember in our trig hexagon, these uh, triangles here represent the Pythagorean identities. Tangent squared plus 1 is secant squared, 1 plus cotangent squared is cosecant squared, and the one that we're going to apply in this case is sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1 from the top there. Uh, so cosine of x divided by sine of x, and uh, when I go to swap out that Pythagorean identity, um, I'm going to still need to divide these fractions, and to divide um, by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. That's what the meaning of dividing a fraction is. So I'm going to change this division to multiplication and then uh, just multiply by the reciprocal. So this denominator, sine times cosine, that's going to come up into the numerator now when I take the reciprocal. So sine x times cosine x is now on top. And then I'm going to swap out that Pythagorean identity, the sine squared x plus so cosine squared x equals 1. And my reason for that step is Pythagorean identity. Okay. So all that's left to do is to multiply these fractions together. And, um, and when I multiply fractions, I multiply straight across the numerator, straight across the denominator. So the sign here in the numerator and denominator, they're going to cancel and leave 1. And then I have a cosine x times cosine x divided by 1, which is just cosine squared x. And that was multiplying fractions for my reason. And when I look back up here at what my goal was, it was to apply identities in algebra to end up with cosine squared x. And we've done it. We've ended up with cosine squared x. Um, and so we've, we've met the goal and this uh, identity has been verified.